Here we have the Super Joy 3. It's many thousand games in one. Sort of not really. Watch the Scrub Hub video for more on that. But I want to start a new series. It's time now for everyone's favorite show. Is it a chip or is it a blob? So place your bets whether you think it's an actual chip or just a blob on the board. So while we're here, I want to go ahead and compare to a real Nintendo 64 controller just for giggles. So. Here's a real controller. They look... I mean, again, it's so it's probably the same mold, at least for the main body. But you say that and you wonder how the buttons could be so vastly different on it. Uh-huh. And how do they... how does that get messed up? Like, uh... I mean, I guess it's not like they just stole the mold, because this is in the plastic part, so... You know, they didn't just fill the Nintendo logo and then do silk screening of that part. So, you know, it's ever so slightly different than a real one, but very similar. The main thing is this doesn't work, so I really want to see what type of... how they've mounted this inside to make a little dummy controller thing here. Looks nice, but yeah. Doesn't feel nice. And then go back out. Yeah. And then they've got like whatever that is. I've seen uh, some terrible emulators that have a like NES slot there, so I don't know if this is a holdover from a different mold from something else, but it is nice that the battery is actually just essentially the memory card pack. But they are certainly different sizes here, but you know, that's that, I guess, so. Enough comparisons, let's take this thing to bits. So we got the battery pack, you know, insert the battery pack, whatever. Um, incidentally, you can't open it. Incidentally, I couldn't fit double A's in here for some reason. Let's try again on air. So let's just shove generic -y. You know, you're not paying a lot of money for this console in the first place. Why would you have real batteries, right? <laughs> These are real batteries to me. Oops. How did I screw up? This is right. Oh, maybe these sunbeams fit and my other batteries didn't. That's weird. Can I shut it? <gasps> well, that's weird. I totally couldn't fit... I guess it was the rechargeables I had. I totally couldn't fit batteries in here earlier, so... Look, they got something right. Let's see if it powers on. Oh, there's no... Is there a light? There's no light. At least they're saving you some power right there. Anyway, so I made a liar of myself. You can fit batteries in this. Can't get them back out, but... Oh, look, they give you a cheap little... Eh. Eh. You get two games in one episode. It's take out all the screws and see what falls apart. <clears throat> Well, I can't reach those. Is this enough? I'm gonna go with no. Are there even screws down there? I can't see that far. Yes, there are. Ooh, they're in there really tight too. Oh, okay. This is this is in pieces now. Oh. Oh, this is crusty looking. Really crusty. Ugh. We got this board I'll take out, and that should be the fastest way to get... Well, we definitely want the button one, though, so we'll take that out. Ah, oh, they've heat-staked the power to the... Ah. Oh. Another bet I was wondering was what type of uh, retention for orientation... Uh, orientation retention? Would they have for the... Where's my real pointer? I forgot I updated to blue. Oh, it matches though. Is this uh, blue looks better? What orientation retention they had, and it looks like uh, kind of the Nintendo style, if not exactly the Nintendo style. Take off these membranes. You can see that they each use different combinations of positions 
focus. They each use different combinations, uh, so that way you can't possibly put a button in the wrong spot, or at least in theory. Nope, holds true. So yes, it's the, and I don't know if Nintendo is the one that started it or if that's just kind of common knowledge, but typically I tend to see in Nintendo controllers more than anything, they have weirder patterns where you wouldn't necessarily need to oddball the shape for it. So that's all, oh, it's so crusty in here. I, think, I don't think that's, I don't know if it's factory or person that had it before me they got it all crusty Ugh. on the controller board we do have a blob but there are more boards in here i mean it's probably the controller matrix but yeah um oh so let's see if i can show you power well, mm, uh, well if i get that top board out i think this will come a little easier to not lose the screws i can screw them back into the little connector here that's pure lazy. Look at that. Now they'll just stay right in there. This is a little easier to work with. What is this madness that this board thing is? I think an entire assembly comes out. Oh. Okay, well first off, this little limp module just kind of falls out now. What held that in? Oh, the board inside of this held it. That's interesting. So, if you can angle it, it comes out. All right, it's weird. It seems slightly expensive. I mean, it's not, but it seems slightly expensive. They've got what I'm assuming is the main processor slash memory. Well, hold on. no, no, I might be wrong here. Okay, so. We can power it on without its unit. See what it does, but I must see what it's like. So here is one generic -y, unbranded you solder mask chipped off of. It's like the solder mask came off. I don't think they had it masked out. It just kind of chipped off. So that's gross. This board has a single transistor, some passives, and a clock. 21.477, hopefully, megahertz. And on the back sides where we start getting really, really scummy. I mean, it feels gross. It's just protecting pins. It's been hot glued on poorly. I mean, well, okay. I can't say it's been hot glued on poorly. It's not coming off, which <laughs> in any situation of hot gluing, if the product does not come apart, it has been hot glued sufficiently. But there's not much hiding there. It's just a chip, which... So this is probably the CPU, by the way. To all those three people that said blob, you are you get uh, bonus points because there are only blobs in here, three blobs in total. So we got this, which is probably the main CPU and video and everything else. This, which is probably just their like m memory or cartridge in here. So usually they have a discrete flash chip, but this one is just a blob. It looks like they can in series program it. And we've got this blob, which I'm assuming is some sort of controller matrix driver type thing. A generic 5 volt 1 amp linear voltage regulator, a little tiny decoupling cap next to the uh, switch, and they got this nice little cute little plastic cover to theme everything that goes right over this switch. Your DC jack in. Oh, that's dorky. Real dorky. Here's what should be the negative off of the battery, and they just tacked it to the casing of the uh, RCA jacks here. So that's where your ground come from, and then your positive goes way under here to the regulator, and it just kind of works. So they have some modularity to it. There's some additional connectors here, but what these actually are just pins that come from this header, which go over to the CPU and memory board. So basically, if they have another variant, they can reuse this board in a multitude of controllers, in different sizes and types that have a similar arrangement. But this looks, you can see that this vaguely looks like a controller in itself, this little section here. So you can have this be a controller, 
And then instead of having this giant breakout terminal that goes to this entire mess over here, you could probably have, say, a little board that goes in this part and then just jump these over to it. And probably that board could have this controller too kind of tied into it somehow. Or something, you know, something along the lines. I haven't seen the variation. And since there's no manufacturer, it's not like I can ever just look at their product line and guess. You know, this looks like not a bad board on this side. Pretty bad hand soldering job up here, but you know, what do you expect? A little bit scummy here too, but again, nothing too gross. It's really just this board that looks like it's been exposed to some sort of death that bothers me. YT001 is a number on it, so it's our first lettering we get. Well, besides component markers. Just real quick, want to look at the molding. It's generic -y, it's crappy, it's nothing special. I don't expect it to me. So I wonder if there exist other variations of this memory little thing that you can adapt in here. And I wonder if these are some sort of common style you can find. So I'll have to, I'll look around a little bit, see if I find anything. Incidentally, that probably means you could replace this with your own custom board, with your own some sort of flash chip or something. Ooh. Incidentally, I now have to watch the video because I didn't remember which orientation this goes in. So if you're doing this in your own house, mark it somehow. Based on the buttons that have powder in them, I'm assuming the person that owned this previously is what gunked these to death with whatever cancer powder they are. And it wasn't me. Oh yeah. There's that little controller knob on the front and there's just a screw on the back here. So it looks like you can take out that controller part. <gasps> now I can confuse people into thinking this actually works. <laughs> If I put a bit of uh, rubber in there, it might feel like pretty good action. Let's let's see if I have anything. We got a piece of white, fluffy dental stuff. Should have made it thicker than the initial layers, but then again, this is cheap. You wouldn't expect it to feel good. So as long as this moves, you can convince someone that there is a working D-pad or working analog stick or whatever. It'd work as a D-pad. They'd believe that. I don't think they'd believe it was analog. Certainly it's been the case in the past when I've tried to show people these bad controller things. There we go. Moves around. Actually, I don't think the, the cloth does anything for it, but it actually feels like it's stepped. I mean, you could probably, I mean, yeah, you could really convince someone that this works to a degree. Ooh, square base, so it's it doesn't rotate freely. That's the level of confidence there. Yeah, that's, that's probably convince worthy. You could certainly hand this to someone and have them play a bit and then tell them, oh, try out the middle stick. And they would they would go, yeah, it's, it's not working. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's been a look at the Superjoy 3. Thank you for watching and all that stuff. If you uh, appreciate these kind of dorky teardowns, like the video. If you don't like these teardowns, like the video and comment on it. Tell me you don't like them and I'll laugh. Either way, you should subscribe because I don't just do teardowns of crappy controllers, even though I've been doing that recently. I promise you. Eventually, that'll stop.